We are in section four, the information and technology dimension of this practice. The exam syllabus for this is to apply, understand how the information and technology supports and enables the practice of change enablement. We will be specifically looking at the automation tools and the recommendations for automation. We begin with the automation solutions for this practice. Before we get into this table, we need to know that in most cases, the work of the chain enablement practice can significantly benefit from automation. The automation term is used in, in this and other ITIL publications to refer to the use of digital technology to enable, support, or enhance various activities. So it can be the full automation of activities where technology solutions remove the need for human intervention, or it could be some other type of automation. This table here lists the key automations supporting the practice and their most common application. The first one listed is the workflow management and collaboration tool. This can support the change models and workflows. For example, the registration of a change followed by assessment and authorization and so on until its closure, or it can also support the activities from the change enablement and optimization process as well. The workflow management and collaboration also supports the communication and collaboration between teams and also the integration of the practice activities into the service value streams. Next, we have the analysis and reporting tools. These help in the review of records, meaning analysis of records for improvement and creation of reports for individual changes, as well as for periodic assessment of change models and the practice. Generally, records are reviewed when a change fails, but it can be done otherwise as well. So in the exam, when you have words like review or analysis, watch out, it could be the analysis and reporting tool to be used. The work planning and prioritization tools can help in planning, prioritization, and assignment of tasks to teams and team members, also to visualize and optimize the workload to identify and prevent resource conflicts. The orchestration helps integrate multiple workflow management and collaboration tools for better visibility and closer collaboration. For example, if there are several organizations working together, such as external suppliers, et cetera, each of them may be using a different set of tools and therefore they need to be integrated for a single view of information, and that's when the orchestration tools are needed. So for example, integration of three workflow tools or integration of workflow with knowledge management and so on. The knowledge management tools help in capturing and sharing of lessons learned, guidelines, and good practices. So for example, searching something from historical records or uh, trying to understand something in order to create a plan, those things can be done using knowledge management tools. Now, I mentioned the word planning. Uh, for planning itself, you need the planning tool, but sometimes uh, some, some research or investigation has to be done to obtain some information for planning purposes, then the knowledge management tool will be necessary or is recommended. So in the exam, do watch out carefully on which tool will be needed in a specific situation. We have the recommendations for automation here, but before I get into that, I would like to show you the practice guide as well. So let me take you to the practice guide. I have here the practice guide in my bookshelf app, which is a local view of this practice guide of change enablement. There are two ways to access your practice guide, one through the people search portal itself, but you need to be connected or be online to view it there. But if it is already downloaded to your bookshelf app on your system, then you can view it offline as well as I'm doing here, though I am connected as well. So here I'm in the chapter number five, information and technology dimension, which is uh, where we are currently. And uh, the table here that we discussed just a while ago is table 5.1, automation solutions within the automation and tooling section. The one I wanted to show you additionally, which is not there in the other set of slides in the courseware is table 5.2. You can go through this on your own because these are specific situations where those tools may be used. So this gives you more understanding of how the tools may be used in each and every step of the two change enablement processes. So for example, we have here, uh, the first one here is the change enablement planning and optimization process and listing all its four activities. And then the next one we have is the change lifecycle management process with its um, several activities here until from the change registration until the closure. So we have six act activities there. And what you see in the second column in table 5.2 is the means of automation. For example, during the change enablement initiation, there is a need or there could be a need for the workflow management and collaboration tools, the analysis and reporting tools, and so on. 
So do go through this. This can also be very useful to you for the exam. But if you already have a solid understanding of this table, 5.1, which is part of the syllabus, then that should be sufficient. As table 5.2 is not really part of the syllabus, but it helps you for better understanding. For exam questions where you need to apply the, the tools uh, concepts. And then going back to the our e-learning courseware, we have the slide on recommendations for automation here. So apart from the, the tools sets that we discussed, there are also some uh, good recommendations here from ITIL regarding the automation. So let's uh, take them one by one here. First of all, automate the value stream is the first recommendation, which means changes can originate from any practice, process, or service, and the changes need to be deployed and released. So when analyzing the change enablement, supported value streams for automation opportunities, map the inputs and outputs of related practices and the processes as well. This includes, but not limited to deployment management, release management, problem management, service request management, projects management, service configuration management, continual improvement, and maybe even IT asset management. So all these can be integrated. Um, so, and so automating the whole value stream taking a holistic view will be um, a good practice. Then we have the next one, allow different workflows for different types of changes, which means uh, firstly, uh, you could have minor, medium and major changes that can all have different workflows uh, from the change registration until change review and closure. Again, you can even classify as standard normal and emergency changes with different workflows. And then another way is to classify based on the changes affecting a service configuration item or a service itself or a practice or a process or a procedure, they can all have different workflows. Some types of changes can have multiple authorization stages that require manual input, whereas other changes can be automated together with their deployment and release throughput uh, throughout all the steps. Now, even though there may be several types of changes, uh, it should not be an overkill. Remember the ITIL guiding principle, keep it simple and practical, which means we don't need to have um, procedures for every situation or every exception but there should be clear guidelines so that uh, the practitioners can uh, find it uh, convenient to perform their practices. Then the next one is not to overcomplicate the workflows and business rules. This can also be important, meaning while the visibility of the entirety of the workflow is necessary for some of the roles, it is not important for many other stakeholders. So when different roles are pulled into the change enablement workflows and related service value streams, provide them with enough information so that they can fulfill their role, but do not overburden them with, for example, all authorization steps or change analysis workflows and so on. Present the stakeholders whose input is required with concise information and clear requests when involving them. So for example, providing uh, additional or unnecessary technical information to a business stakeholder is not a good idea unless it is absolutely needed or if they are asking for it. Then we have the next one, pay attention to measurement and reporting from the beginning. Meaning the success criteria for the change, either through assessing the outputs or the outcomes, need to be defined and clearly communicated to stakeholders before the work on the change begins. Various aspects of workflow and value stream efficiency and effectiveness can and should be measured, among other things. Input to the change optimization process uh, also uh, should be uh, considered. And when analyzing value streams, the steps taken before the change is registered should also be measured for unnecessary delayed or other types of waste, among other aspects. Workflow management and collaboration tools can provide vast amounts of data for change enablement metrics. Then we have the next uh, recommendation, which is communications are important. Uh, while the reason for the change should be understood by all stakeholders, the progress of the change can also be important for stakeholders to identify any delays or deviations and take necessary action. So make sure that the stakeholders are properly identified and stakeholder management plans have been created for all non-trivial changes that have the chance of a medium or high impact on the people's work. Then last, we have the pay attention to integrations. As the realization of different types of changes can be managed in different tools, for example, project management software for those changes managed as projects, or automated release and deployment tools for software changes, or Kanban boards for product related changes, and so on. So it might be difficult to have good visibility of the progress of work. 